Hello everyone, what's going on? It's the Lemon King back here for another video and today we are going to be going through Parapathic Rage. This is the Parapathic Rage Minecraft Map Solution Guide. Parapathic Rage is a Minecraft map that was just released by myself and my friend The Secret Potato and it is going to be awesome. So, <clears throat> if you've been playing the map already, then you've probably seen how difficult it can be. But if you're not familiar with the map yet or you haven't seen it, basically the map is just a series of levels that just are meant to make you rage. There's nothing else to it. No objectives or goals, just 10 levels. I guess you can see how far you can get, but you, we don't think you're going to make it that far. It's, it's a pretty nasty map. But this will be the solution guide to the map. Now, before we actually jump into the solutions for the various levels, we actually have solutions to them, we just wanted to leave this little disclaimer before you actually go and watch the rest of this video. So before you skip ahead to the part that you're looking for, we recommend listening to this part right now. So the objective of the Minecraft map, Parapathic Rage, is to get to the end, whether that be complete the map or quit. So at the beginning of each level of the map, there is a teleporter that will take you to the end of the map, and there's some important information at the end. And if you go through everything at the beginning of the map, it will say that it's important for you to not rage quit and delete the map, but rather, when you get stuck on a level, quit the level right there, go to the end of the map, and read the important information at the end. It's vital for the success of what the map was intended to do, so it's important that everybody follows that role if you can, because it'd be greatly appreciated. So, the objective of the solution guide isn't to give pe give players the way to cheat their way through the map, or else the purpose of the map is pretty much useless at that point, because we want to see how far you get without cheating. So we only recommend you watch this video if you've played it through once and have done it the right way, then you can come back, watch this video, and see if you can get the solution to what you were stuck at, or if you want to see the rest of the map and the solutions if you don't want to play it again. But the first time around, we want you to play it the legit way, then after that you can play it and see if you can beat the levels as much as you want. But also, if you're not going to play the map, then it's okay if you want to watch this video and see what kind of horrors that lie beneath the map. But it's crucially important that if you play this map, that you play it through the right way, follow the rules, and then if you get stuck, teleport to the end using the teleporters, and follow the instructions at the end. At the end of the map, you'll be given a book that'll explain the whole purpose of the map, and we'll give you some links to some things that we asked that you visit. And that's the whole point of this map. So, again, this isn't really a cheat sheet. I wouldn't use it as that, because if you just cheat your way through the whole map, the information you give us at the end is pretty much useless. So, with that being said, we are ready now to jump into the actual, actual solutions to the map starting with level one. All right, so now we are ready to jump in with the solution guide to Parapathic Rage. So once you go through and click all the buttons in the main lobby, this gate will open and you'll be able to jump into level one, which is the dropper. Now again, you're given a hint for this map and you are given the exit room right over here. If you press that exit, step on that pressure plate, you're gonna take into the end of the map where you can complete the map with all the stuff at the end. And remember that is very important to this whole system. But there is one tricky way, so once you press this button, the floor is going to drop out beneath you. There actually is one tricky way to go about this. So the actual way to do this, there's one path specifically made down. It's at X111 and Y-30. So right here. So we're going to say a block right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here hit this button, and I'm going to replace myself onto this block and drop on down, and boom, right through. That's all there is to it. So, the intention was to build this nasty dropper that there is only one way down, which is standing at Y or X111 and Z-30, and that will drop you straight into the water. There might be other ways to go about doing it. We haven't tested other ways, but that's the main way you get down. So that's the solution to level one. So we can go over here and hop into level two, which is find the button. So again, find the button. We got the exit room right here, and we got the hint right here. Now the hint's gonna tell you it's on the outer wall. So specifically where the solution is, there's a lot of space here. That's a lot of junk that doesn't do any purpose to this map. However, 
The button is actually over here on this cliff, right here. So, if you look, there's no way easily to get up here. However, you can parkour where this chicken's going up. You can parkour up to here, jump up to here, up to here, up to here, and climb up to the top of the mountain and get to this button. And that will get you to the end of level two. So level three becomes the invisible maze. Now this one is fairly nasty. So I'm going to get the wand out and I'm going to try to make this as clear as possible for everybody to see how to go about this one. I don't have the solution memorized either. So we will replace all of the barrier blocks with stone. stone. I wanted regular stone, but okay. Stone, 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 stone. Okay, so the way to go about this one. We can start from the back here. Again, this is a two level maze. So you're going to drop down here and end up at the second level. But if we work our way from the back of the top, as we can see, we need to wherever our way around this way. It's the only real way to go. It's one direct path. And then we can hang our right over to this way. And then we can skedaddle our way all the way back over here. So this one's pretty simple on the top floor. It's a lot of nooks and crannies, but you can just wind your way straight through over to here, up, and around, and through to the end of the map. So that is that. So let me just change all this back real quick. Not that. Stone barrier. There we go. Alright. So now we can do the same thing down here, except this one's going to be a little more complicated because of all this. The height ceiling is a lot lower, so we're going to... I should have done that. Oh well. But we'll go here, place the second position, change all the barrier to stone, 600 blocks worth of it, to be exact. Now fly back in here. Now we can see this has all been set up. So I believe there are a couple solutions to get away with this one. So if we hang a straight down here and end up back over in this section over here, we can go down and go over, we can head our way up here, and then we can easily maneuver our way to the back. This level, or this section, is fairly simple. I was when I built this, but there are a lot of loops and stuff that can easily get you lost in disarray of your orientation, which was my objective here. But, that being simple, that's how this one works. So, you're going to fly down here, hit the button, you're going to go off to level 4. Now, I'm going to set my game mode to peaceful so we don't have er, yeah, difficulty peaceful. So we don't have a ton of mobs spawning out there just so I can reuse this server. This isn't the actual download of the map, this is on the server. So, Level 4 is the Arena of Pain. So if you look here, you got the quick game button again. There is a secret chest down here with a with a diamond chest plate that you can use and take advantage of. Now again, this is a two-player type of map if you really want two players. So we have double the amount of loot in here. We have some unbreaking hats, some legs, chests, some simple stuff in here. Nothing really special, nothing that's going to save you. So the point here is isn't exactly to beat this map because there are a lot of monsters that are going to spawn you're going to have zombies creeper blaze mixes spider skeleton mixes zombie shulker mixes and vindicator type mixes so there's a lot of things going on with this arena so the way to beat this map the way to beat this level <coughs> sorry about that the way to beat this level very simply is to first come all the way over here and grab this little tiny chest that's in this corner down there. If you can really see it, it's just tucked away in this corner. You shift your way into it, there's two fire protection books and some bottle of chanting. You want to take those books all the way back over to the door, come back in, enchant them in the anvil, that's why we have unbreaking gear, and there's the unbreaking chest plate in there. And again, keep inventories on, so you don't have to worry about that. But hopefully stuff doesn't break, and hopefully you figure it out before stuff breaks. So once you put the fire protection on, you can come all the way back over here to the lava, and in this little section right here, you can jump down. There's one little block in the middle that you can end up hitting, but you'll drop through into the water. Don't hit that middle block. And you come down here. The key to exit is actually in this chest. So if we come up here and hit the button, it should teleport us back to the jail. And then again, from the jail, all you have to do is run your way over across the map with that key and hit that key onto this door here. And I'm just going to break the door just to simplify our life 
and that will take you to this end room which you are locked in and safe from the mobs and you can teleport out to level five now again difficulty is going to be set to hard because there's some nitpicky stuff in the parkour that <clears throat> we need a difficulty to set to hard so here we have the gas blaster and that will be used against the ghasts and again the exit room is in here so you're going to hop your way into the portal and it will take you to the parkour now loud nether noises and once you step on this trip wire you're going to get hunger and poison the only reason we're going to do that for this first section is so that when you fall you die when you die you're going to respawn back in that main room so you're going to jump your way through the parkour and again all this parkour has been tested I'm not going to go through all of it now. There really is no solution to this. It's just do the parkour. But once you hit this next pressure plate, it is going to trigger a pathway along here that is going to allow you to checkpoint yourself. Now, one thing that people are going to report as bugs, because again, I didn't, we didn't upload the map yet. We're actually recording this before we put the map up for download, is that since it is on hard difficulty, the zombie pigmen are able to trip off this tripwire. And if one of them trips off the tripwire, it is going to place the pathway. So if you get lucky enough to have the zombie pigmen trip off the tripwire, it's good for you. Just in addition to that. It's a very trolley type of system. So, again, that's actually not a bug. That is by design. If you are lucky enough that a zombie pigman trips off the tripwire and you get skipped a level, that's on you. Otherwise, you're going to have to do some really nasty parkour. So there's three stages up here, then you're going to drop down and end up in this bottom stage, which is even more nasty, and you're really hoping a zombie pigman could trip off this tripwire, or else you're going to be waiting here for a while. But once you get to the end of this, you're just going to teleport back through into a little tiny room. Other sounds. And hit this button, and you will be teleported out to level six, which is the dumb trivia branch. Now again, exit room in there. Now, I'm not going to go through the solution to the dumb trivia, but as you can see, there's going to be a series of questions and answers. And if you press the wrong answer, say this one, the floor drops from underneath you, and you're going to plummet to your death. When you press the right one, it's going to teleport you over to the next question, where you can step on the pressure plate and get the question. Now, again, a lot of these questions are going to be a mix of really hard questions that only certain people would know, really dumb questions, all kinds of stuff. So I'm not going to go through the solution guide to this one because again, it's only a one in three chance of getting it wrong. But if you really want the solutions, well, I guess I'll do the solution guide right now. So the answer to the first one, which is, what color can zombie clothes wear? Blue and green. In programming language, what kind of binding occurs where a function is referenced? If you go over here, we can tell it is this guy right here, which is deep binding. Where was the fortune cookie first invented? It's gonna be this guy right here. First, first country to invent the fortune cookie, America. What animal is known to kill more people than plane crashes? It is actually donkeys. At what university did Ben and Jerry learn how to make ice cream? If we go over here and check, we can tell it is Penn State University. In which U.S. state is it illegal to play pinball machine if you are under the age of 18? It is actually South Carolina. In Missouri, it is illegal to play what game on Sundays? It is Hopscotch. In Minecraft, which is not a real color of a concrete building block? This one should be obvious, but we'll go with teal. How many legs does a lobster have? Good old tan legs. How many sides does an ice icocytrahedron or icocytrigon, icocytrigon have? Again, big words, big words. 24. And that will take you to the end of the map. So there you go. Pretty simple. There's your solution guide. Hopefully you guys can figure that out on your own. But we can come over here, we can hit this button and head over to level seven. This one we will be put into survival, but I'm gonna go back into actually I'm going to go into spectator mode for this one. Because this one is minecart madness. The objective of this is there's going to be a room full of three minecarts and they're going to branch off into different rooms. Some of the branches will lead into lava, some of them will lead into another room of three minecarts and your objective is to find the path that actually takes you to the solution so again we have the quick game room in here and we have the objective over here it just tells you how to go about this so the solution to this path is actually the right path first so you come down the right path end up in another room of three then you're going to go down the middle path 
end up in another room three. Then go down the middle path again, and end up in another room of uh, three. And we go down the right path again, and wind our way down to another room of three. And then we go down the left path, which will take us to the button to leave. But otherwise, any other sequence of paths that isn't exactly that will lead you to lava. So as you can see, a couple here in a little lava pools. There's some that just end up in bigger lava pools. But there's a big matrix-like structure going on with different choices of different paths to take. So hopefully you guys can uh, guess that one. But there's your solution. Right, center, center, right, left is the way to get to the end of this one. So I'm going to fly down here and go back into creative mode so we can move on to the next level so we'll teleport here level eight which is speed parkour and again this one i'm not going to be able to test that much because again you just have to you just have to time the parkour right and you can speed through it but again got the quick game go in here and press that button leave or you can get the objective which is pretty simple press the button time your hops you set the adventure mode again and go back in creative so I'm just going to fly through this and show you guys what it looks like. So we're going to start out with the orange here. Time it right, get to the red. Time it over to the green. Over to purple really quickly. And then purple down to orange. We're going to wait here a second, then get the blue. Then right over to purple. And then up to green, then over to blue really quickly. And then over to red. Red, there will be a little bit of a delay. Then it's going to hop over to orange. Then right over to purple really quickly. Then on to blue. And then there's a really long delay. And then you have to time it really quick, jump on green, and right off. So that is the pattern to go about this. So you can just watch it over and over again if you're stuck. But it is a different mix of timings. They're not all the same timing. They're all in different spots, height-wise, width-wise, all kinds of stuff like that. So it does make it pretty challenging. So we can teleport out of here over to level 9. Now level 9, we're going to go into spectator mode again. So when you spawn in this little hub here, again, you can go in the quick game room and get out of here. But you're going to be forced to press this objective button. So the objective button, what it's going to do is it's going to spawn a certain amount of specialized villagers into the village in here and then it's going to drop the gate so your objective is to go about find the items to trade with the specific villagers and trade your way through to get the button at the end now if you were to press this button here it's actually going to tell you to don't waste too much time because actually it's one big troll you can trade your way all the way to the end. It's like a sequence of nine villagers and you have to craft and stone cut and brew and all kinds of stuff. You can trade your way all the way through the nine villagers to get a button, but you're not going to be able to actually place it on this diamond block. But there is a way you can go about it. If you go down, the secret here is jump in this pile of water where all these guys are. There is a barrel down here which has the exit button in it. All you gotta do, take that exit button, plop it onto this button here on this, this diamond block and you'll be able to go but for now just so we can teleport out of here I'm going to press the button and delete it and we're going to go to level 10 which is the library now the library is again another troll as you can imagine the objective in this one's pretty obvious there are a lot of buttons lots and lots of buttons have been placed and your goal ideally is that one of these buttons will actually teleport you to the end of the map because there's only 10 levels but, like the other troll, none of these buttons are actually going to do anything. The only button that's going to end this map is actually if you hint, hit the hint button. So I'm going to again go on a spectator so we can get out of here. The hint button will actually run a sequence of a bunch of text on the screen that goes through some kind of dialog box that you guys can figure out yourself. And this guy will TP you to the end of the map. So I'm just going to do that really quick. Actually, I think I have a button on it already. I do. So that will TPS to the end of the map. And that is the entire map, all 10 levels and the solution. So again, while I'm here in the end of the map, it is important that if you are playing this map that you quit on where you get stuck and teleport to the end of the map here. There is some important information that involves the credits to the map. There is this important book here that the book is actually going to go through what, what the purpose of the map was. And it's also going to give you a link to a form that you can fill out that is important for our feedback on this map. So that's why we want everybody to play the map normally. Then you can see some of my previous maps here and link to them. And that is it. So that's the entire solution guide on how to do Parapathic Rage, the Minecraft map. We hope you all enjoy the map and we hope that this helps if you got stuck or if you just want to see how to do this map. Leave a like if you liked and comment down below how far you got on the map and any kind of feedback you have if you want to leave that that is fine as well 
other than that, that's all I got for you guys today. So thanks for watching, everybody, and see you all next time.